genius, dude! People shit on songs like WAP. Why do people start popping off about how classical music is dead? We found that somehow being white makes it so you don't appreciate the finer art within the song. What does that have to do with WAP? What is WAP? Is that that wet ass pussy song or whatever that people are getting really weird about Ben Shapiro and his wife's sexual habits for? I have no opinion about You're a genius, dude. anything related to that. Um, I just want to say, like, and I understand that we don't care about consistency or anything. I feel like this vacation is, I've been on a good vacation. I think we're going to go back to not saying retarded and shit again. But damn, is it hard when no one else seems to give a fuck. All of the lefties or people making fun of, like, Ben Shapiro and his wife's, like, sexual habits are really, really, really fucking Thank weird. You, like, almost on the level of conservatives that He's make fun of, like, gay people for having, like, anal sex. It's really, it's really fucking weird. It is so fucking weird to me to see people theorize about Ben Shapiro and his wife's sex life. Like, unironically fucking weird. Was your point that he shouldn't say that the teachers are racist because it's systematic? No, what, whatever um, whatever he said was fine. Whatever um, Adam Neely said was fine. But a lot of people miss that, or it seemed to be missing that sometimes. I think even beyond the weirdness, it seems they missed the humor he was putting into diagnosing the women. Yeah, true. And then the funny thing, too, is that you unironically reveal, like, a lot of actual unironic virgins, too. Like, I see when people talk about it. Like, a lot of people, like, for instance, like, spamming shit, like, oh, the wetter the better, the wetter the better. Like, that's actually not true at all. Um, if you're with somebody that gets, like, really, really, really wet, the reduction in friction can make it feel bad for both you and the woman. But, I mean, like, a lot of these people unironically reveal that they've never actually been with a wet as fuck woman before. <laughs> so, like, it's, like it's, it's, like, extra funny, too. There's, like, extra levels of humor on top of it, unironically. But, I don't know. This, all of that shit is, like, really fucking... Yeah, it's tr we're on 17 layers of irony, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, the weird, like, over-sexualization of Ben Shapiro's sister is also really fucking weird. I, ca I, I, I think, um, I think it's weird because, um, drawing people into arenas where they're not, like, part of them is just very strange. Like, a lot of people, for instance, wanted me to debate, like, Lauren Southern's sister or some shit, and it's like, dog... I don't know if she gives a fuck about any political thing. Like, I don't know if it's fair to like, why? Like, why would we, why would you harass her about her sister's sexual, or not sexual shit, political shit? But Shapiro's sister doesn't engage in political shit now? Yeah, sure, I don't know, but it's still weird to like- Shut the fuck up, Moomin, all right? It's a stupid fucking meme. I, I don't know where our values are, and I don't know who believes in what, but like, I thought it was really fucking weird how obsessed conservatives were with what gay people do in the bedroom. That shit to me was just very fucking strange. If you hate the gays so much, why do you think about like where their dicks go more than they do? That's just fucking weird to me. But then now to see people doing it and talking incessantly about like Ben Shapiro's wife or Ben Shapiro, Shapiro's sister is like, I don't know, that's also like really fucking weird to me. I, I don't know, it just feels strange. The side that says people shouldn't sexually objectify women talking extensively about Shapiro's sister's mommy milkers. Yeah, holy shit. Hey, wait. No one shows you get to find more subs. Thank you, my dude. Appreciate it. Doesn't Shapiro bring up his wife all the time though? Yeah, but like, just because he brings up his wife doesn't mean that you could start talking about his like wife's wet ass, but that's really fucking weird. <laughs> Are you aware of the initial tweet? The initial wasn't the, yeah the initial tweet was something that like because his wife's a doctor and if you need like a a bucket to mop up the floor or whatever you probably need to see a doctor or some shit right isn't that like the the original it was like a joke that he made but like I don't know listen if you guys want to go off and go off I guess it sounds like you're unaware of how much of a meme he is. What? It sounds like you're unaware of who the fuck I even am. What do you mean? Of course I'm aware of how much of a meme Ben Shapiro is. I just think it's kind of weird that you guys want to go off. Like, it's, never mind. Oh, I get so triggered. I actually get, like, so triggered talking about this. It's actually, like, one of the things that bothers me the most when I see people on the left, like, almost, like, like being homophobic as fuck towards people like Pete Buttigieg or, like, sexualizing the fuck out of, like, Abby Shapiro or Ben Shapiro's wife. It's, like, really fucking weird. It's the Fox dude drives me nuts. That's the kind of shit that pushes kids down the alt-right rabbit hole. Yeah, maybe. I think I told you I got a couple emails from people over the Kyle Rittenhouse thing who were like, listen, I love you and you pull me out of the alt-right, but I'm sorry, dude. Listening to a lot of the people talking about this shit is like literally pushing me back. I have to take a break. Oh my god.
I watched like I couldn't watch too much of it mainly because I just don't care that much. But dude, listening to um, Hassan had some Twitter video posted with his take on the uh, on the Antifa shooter. Damn, dude, he was so much more kind and measured in his response to this guy versus um, Kyle Rittenhouse. And it's crazy because that Antifa dude, from whatever, from everything that I've seen so far, was like literally just a fucking murderer. Like, the dude just walked up to a guy and shot him point fucking blank and walked away. And then literally did an interview on Vice, like, fucking hours later, like, the next day or some shit. Like, oh my because god. Because I'm putting 100%... People are harassing the AT&T girl too for the milk as shit feels weird, man. Yeah, just a little bit. Some tweets are a dig on Ben not arousing his wife, not nor sex, not. Some tweets are a dig on Ben not arousing his wife, not sexualizing her. No, well, it's kind of hard to hit both of those, and it also pushes forward some like it, it's also ironically. I hate talking about all of this. It also pushes forward a lot of like bad women's anatomy too. Here's two. Here's two different types of bad women's anatomy. Um, one is um. Wait, what? Hold on. Um, one is that the wetter the pussy, the better the sex. That's just not true. Getting too wet is sometimes a problem for both parties involved, right? Like, the, the man or the woman won't feel what's going on if it's too wet. That's just a fact, number one. And number two, just because a woman's not ultra wet doesn't mean she's not aroused. That's another, like, really pervasive bad anatomy thing where it's like, holy shit, like, I'm with this girl and she's not getting, like, ultra fucking soaked. Like, is she not aroused? Or, like, where women are like, fuck, like, I think my vagina's broke. Like, I don't get that wet when I have sex. Like, I feel, like, really shitty that I'm not, like, drooling buckets. Like, I don't want to use lube because if I use lube, it makes me feel broken as a woman. Like, my, like my vagina's not good enough for sex like but like both of these things are really bad like these are literally like bad women's anatomy tier pushes but it's okay because we're doing it to own ben shapiro's life i guess i don't know it's just weird uh, but i don't know whatever The wetter, the better. It's like people who think warm weather is better. Than... Yeah, sure. It's almost... I am one of those people. I honestly don't think I can believe anything anymore unless I see a first-hand video. Yeah, seriously. The Kyle stuff was brutal. Vosh kept trying to make the point that he planned everything ahead simply because he was wearing medical gloves. He said he wore them to protect himself from gunpowder. Yeah, I know, which, do which doesn't even make sense. Uh, whatever, dude. I, I don't like talking about the shooter shit so often, but like the Antifa shooter guy was clearly like a piece of shit. Very clearly Antifa, like very clearly like human trash, like very clearly was a self-defense. Like everything is there, Stop like pretty obviously. But watching note. people treat him with like kids gloves compared to like the Kyle Kyle guy who was like a white supremacist, neo-Nazi terrorist murderer that showed up along with his white nationalist friends to like high five white nationalist cops that were getting white supremacist water injected directly into their veins to go and murder as many black, like Jesus Christ. Do you ever feel like an NPC in like someone else's life? Do you think that the left's replacement of religion with their politics has led to a decrease in values? Um, I don't like that. Talking about values is kind of weird. I don't know about that. Hold on one second. Did the Antifa shooter shoot someone unprovoked? Yeah, basically. The Antifa shooter guy basically, like, walked up to a dude on the street. He was, like, waiting in an alley to, like, ambush this guy. Walked up to him, shot him point blank, and then fucking ran away. <laughs> like, um, yeah. It, it, like, it was, like, insane. It was, like, insanely fucked up. And then, but then, like, people on the left, so, like, something is like, oh, well, the guy had, like, a knife and a gun on him, blah, blah, blah. I think he had a gun on him, but it hadn't even been drawn. There was no knife found anywhere on the scene. And then, um, and people are saying shit like, um, people are saying shit like, um, like, he shot him in self-defense because the other guy had bear mace. <laughs> like, the guy didn't even discharge the mace. You see mace go off in the, uh, in the video, but that's because he got shot in the, he got shot in the canister. Like, yeah, I don't know. He had mace in his hand already? Wrong! No, he didn't! Unless there's another video, he absolutely did not. It was still attached to his belt. Or at least, if it was, he was holding it, he got shot in the mace can.
What is mace? Like um, pepper spray or whatever. Would you say that using mace if it happened would be a reason to shoot him? Just asking your opinion. Um, maybe, maybe not. But the problem is that like this video, this video is totally different. Okay, this video is totally different. It looks like the guy just walking the street, and the other guy walks up to him. They say a few things, I think, and then he just shoots him and then runs away. This wasn't like a guy was chasing somebody or this guy was getting violent. Originally, that the Antifa shooter guy was saying like, "Oh, I had to protect my friends from getting stabbed." No, no one else in the fucking video. There's no friends next to him. This guy's not threatening anybody. There's no one. What? What the fuck are you talking about? Like, unless he's operating under Bastia's self-defense principle, where if a guy aggresses on you, you can kill him for an infinite amount of time later or something. Do you, do we know why he died to the police yet? Apparently when the police showed up, he had a shootout, is all I've read. I don't know exactly what happened, but. Yeah, and I think anybody that defends the Antifa shooter and condemns like Kyle, R I think anybody that's ultra gentle on the Antifa shooter and ultra hardcore on Kyle, R you should probably, you should ignore everything they have to say related to politics. Cause well, unless it's your thing, I guess which for a lot of people it is, because it's clearly like somebody that's just ultra ideologically driven. Like they don't give a fuck about what happened for anything. They don't look at evidence of anything. They literally are just parroting whatever the latest Twitter thread is from like either our bread tube or our fucking Trump supporter. I don't know where, I don't know where MAGA people gather now, but like, yeah, it's like unbelievable. Yeah. But whatever, I don't care that much. Political entertainment, true. Would you say the election is almost 50-50 now? I don't think so. I don't think the election is close at all yet. Where does it go when they say the same about you? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. We all have to... That's something we all wrestle with, isn't it? What if we're the baddies? What if we're the dummies? The dummy dum-dums. Dum, 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 dum. Dummy dum-dum. I mean, the main takeaway is that people need to stop taking guns to protest because they're too fucking stupid to use them responsibly. Okay, sure. <sighs> Fuck, I wish I could play. I want to play this game with a lefty. <laughs> um, I'm too lazy to do it, but I, I wish I could. Um, Fuck, I'm not gonna be able to find this article. Destiny, do you know who Douglas Murray is and if so, what do you think of his addressing of identity politics in his latest book, The Madness of Crowds? GG Bud, I'm a conservative but you're the guy I get takes from the other side from. I, I, don't, I don't know enough about Charles Murray and that guy creeps me out a little bit, I'm not sure. Anybody that like obsessively talks about race, it makes me wonder and he's pretty obsessed with it so I don't know. Wait, Douglas Murray, not Charles Murray? Oh, sorry. Du oh, I don't know who the fuck Douglas Murray is. Sorry, I'm thinking of Charles Murray in the bell curve. I don't know anything about Douglas Murray. Sorry, my bad. I wish I could just like read this article to like a lefty and get their take on it. Like, <clears throat> Kenosha, it's approaching 2 a.m. and uh, the city council member, Kyle Rittenhouse, is patrolling his neighborhood in a black sedan patrolling his neighborhood when the smell of smoke wafts through the open driver's side windows. Several white-owned businesses have been destroyed in the area, considered the heart of the city's white community, and recent fires and investigators have deemed suspicious. Neighbors suspect uh, Antifa shooters, and social media has been abuzz with purported but unverified sightings of masked uh, black men in pickup trucks holding semi-automatic assault rifles. Like, I'm super curious what, like, uh, what, like, somebody would hear, or what somebody would think about, like, hearing this. Because I feel like 99% of people if they heard shit like that, would be like, yeah, like, this is super ultra fucked up. Destiny link? Well, like, so here's the link. So I'm changing words around, but in actuality, this is referring to the black um, people that were defending their neighborhoods in Minnesota, right? 
uh, Minneapolis. It's approaching to him, and City Council member Jeremiah Ellison is patrolling his neighborhood in a black sedan. Several black owned businessmen have been destroyed in the area. Basically, this has to do with how black people were losing faith in the cops because riots were destroying businesses, black owned businesses in their areas. But, like, it seemed like people were glowering. Is that a word, glowing? Um, we're like very happy with like black people coming out with guns here to protect their businesses and blah 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 um, And people seem to be like really positive towards like yeah, the police can't do anything. Fuck them um, Oh glower is scowl. Okay, never mind. Glowering? Glowering? I've read that word before. I don't know exactly what it is. But like um, yeah, it seemed like people were like um, People would be like super ecstatic when black people do it, but like this is the exact same shit This is literally vigilante justice literally like bodyguard fucking crazy, uh, you know, take the law into your own hands but Are you gonna have to do a reverse left here to purge the right wing followers you gain? Um, I think they'll leave automatically. What is the bell curve? Charles Murray wrote some big book about how all black people are retarded basically because of their African genes. It's just don't, don't, it's not even worth getting into. Okay, but it's anytime somebody- He's gonna kill me again. <clears throat> somebody bringing up Charles Murray's the bell curve is the equivalent to a one night stand where a girl says, oh, come in me, I'm on protection, I promise. You just, that's the biggest red flag you can ever hear. You just get the fuck out, okay? Somebody starts bringing up the bell curve, then you're like, oh shit, oh no, my internet's going, and then you permablock, you just never talk to him again, okay? You just leave. It's just, not, don't, you don't ever want to be there, okay? It's just not, because, because as soon as you ask one question, the bell curve, what's that? It's like 700 million paste bins of like warrior gene, uh, receptors in black people, uh, phenotypical differences in black brain. And you're like, oh, it's like a deluge of fucking garbage paste bin links amassed over over 50 trillion different furious masturbation sessions of loser 35 year old overweight white kids that still live with their Serbian parents who they think would somehow still be Nazis or whatever because they have no historical ideas about anything. Like, it's just the worst shit ever, okay? Don't ever, don't ever, don't. As soon as someone brings up the bell curve, you just leave, okay? You just walk out. People keep saying do a 360 and walk away. If you do a 360, you're not gonna be walking away. It, it, that's not walking away directly. That's gonna be like walking left or right. Oh man, you guys are finally, you guys are ascending to the seventh level of irony. Yeah, <laughs> welcome to the club, boys. A few of you are there. Most of them are still down on level two. How do I reconcile the whole race and IQ thing? You don't. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to think about it. 99% of the time, you don't ever. How often does IQ come up in your daily life, okay? Are you writing this in your fucking Bumble profile? Are you putting this down when you meet girls? Like, yo, what's up? Oh man, are you interested in kids? I know that I am, but I'm really worried about mating with somebody that has like a below a, a, a first standard deviation above the norm IQ. Like, do you, have you taken the test? Like, do you have your Mensa certificate? Like, I mean the real one too, and not like an online one. Like, this is really important to me, bro. Like, come on, dude. How do you feel about the necrophilia discord? Necrophilia is so boring. I mean, it's just a fucking body. Like the only reason why the only reason why we don't fuck corpses is because nobody wants their corpse fucked when they're dead. So we say don't fuck corpses because it's bad. But if you do fuck a corpse, it's not like that guy's gonna give a fuck, all right? He, well, he'll give you one last fuck, I guess. But like he's pretty dead. Like I don't think he cares. But if we had a society full of corpse fuckers, it might bother living people because they don't want their corpse to get fucked. So. Maybe we should have, actually, maybe through some normative, like, maybe through some, like, utilitarian model, maybe corpse fucking should be mandatory because corpses can't have any more decrease in happiness because their happiness state is always neutral. And anybody fucking a corpse will necessarily get a net increase in happiness. So maybe corpse fucking by utilitarian virtues is always a net increase in happiness in society. Eh. Anyone fucking a corpse would be happier, not me, weird champ. Maybe. I mean, it depends on how fresh the corpse is, right? 
If you were in the middle of fucking somebody and they died, it's unlikely to think that your enjoyment of that act would end the moment they would die, because you might not be 100% aware of it. It's entirely possible. I fucked a lot of girls, okay, that are indistinguishable from corpses sometimes, because they just lay there and they do fucking nothing. You want to know how you identify these girls? You want to know the hot take, guys? Are you ready? I've dropped this one before on stream and I'm dropping it again, okay? If you're chatting up a girl and she says that she's a sub, Nine out of ten times, what that means is she wants to lay there and do nothing, okay? That's 100% true, okay? 27 sub girls in chat were just like, oh no, what, I'm actually a sub? No, you're not. You're a lazy bitch who wants to lay there and do nothing, okay? It is true, nine out of ten times, maybe not every time. But anyway, uh, you could be fucking a corpse for some level of time, okay? I think there's like, I think there's a little bit of gray room in there, all right? So many people just want to fuck to not have sex. It feels like a lot of people just want to fuck for the experience of saying they fucked. It's really fucking weird. It's so strange. Guys do this too. Guys and girls do this. It's really fucking weird. But the one, I feel like we're looping through conversations. The one weird thing I always hear is like, if you ask somebody sometimes like, oh, like how was the sex or whatever? When somebody, if you ask somebody how the sex with somebody was and the first thing they say is like, oh my God, dude, it was great. That person was so hot. It's like, I mean, what the fuck does that have to do with anything? <laughs> Torture your cock and balls must endure. Two spaces forward, your cock will be stretched. 